I'm Maria and this is the Agile State of Mind. Welcome! Today we're gonna continue talking about the onboarding. Today we're gonna talk about the body. If you ever felt forever alone on your onboarding, I bet you it was because you didn't get a body. Having a peer, a colleague, that can walk you through the technicalities of the new role is gold. And today we'll see what is the value of designating a body for the company and the new joiner. Let's see how this goes. All right, so who is a body? A body is a person that can be designated by a manager or somebody that is in charge of the onboarding, but I tell you in the development team, they can just self-organize to designate a body. And this person's job is to help the new joiner ramp up. And it is mostly about the technicalities and role specific details of the job, which I will cover in a moment. However, a part of the role is also to hang out with the new joiner, make them feel welcomed and taken care of. The more proactive and curious the body is, the more engaging the experience gets for both parties. All this has a lot of value for the new joiner, the body and the company. Let's see why. First of all, we make sure the new joiners start providing value for the company sooner rather than later, but also we increase the ownership and the engagement of the current employee. Anybody can take the role of the body. I would go even further and if we have a team, I would make a round of them so everybody gets to be a body. Well, of course, if the company employs so many people that we can do a full round and that's because it is very beneficial for current team members. They need to know what is important to pass on and learn some soft skills. If one needs to onboard someone, one needs to first understand it all themselves, right? There is a learning process involved along with organizing everything in one's head and on a piece of paper. What do you know? Here goes another onboarding checklist. I tell you, never underestimate the power of a good checklist. What's more? In case you have a candidate for a senior developer or a lead position, this might be a great opportunity for them to see what it takes in action so they can improve their skills in teaching and mentoring. So about the checklist, let's see what are the desirable hard skills of a good body. And as I said before, this role could be taken by anyone in the company and for any role in the company, it really makes a difference. It's really just a good practice. It's like getting a guide when you move to a new town or a new neighborhood. Doesn't it make a lot of difference if you have an acquaintance? They can show you the ropes, indicate how to do all the paperwork most efficiently. And on top of that, they can also share the good stuff, like all the best restaurants and places to go to. And assigning a body is just like that. And it's exceptionally good practice when it comes to onboarding new development team members. It is because even though you will do the same thing, let's say code or be a QA, each company has somehow slightly different ways of doing the same stuff, right? You know that the first hand, don't you? So there are different tools, different processes, different working agreements and ways of doing the same stuff. An example of all the checklists of the things that you could go over with the new joiner would be in my previous video, new joiner onboarding. So I will not go through it once again because it's pretty long. In summary, what you need to do is to show the developer the code, explain all the development environments you have in the company, any working agreements the given team has, like pull request checklist or definition of done. And as you can probably already predict, a leading practice in all this for a developer would be to do a lot of pair programming, especially strong style or driver and navigator pairing. I explain a little bit more about pair programming, why it's important and all the different styles in the video here, just in case you missed it. Huh? So that would be for the hard skills. And now let's move on and talk about the soft skills. So here we need a little, some level of 
proactivity from the body. They become co-responsible for the onboarding of the new joiner. So they need to make sure that the new joiner gets fully operative as soon as possible. And they do that by removing any blockers or impediments to their progress. It's a little bit like the scrum master with the team. You make sure that they can progress, they have all the access they need, and there's nothing that stands in their way that they cannot remove by themselves. Of course, they don't know the company yet. So let's see what soft skills the body should employ. One, be proactive and be available. What really could work for both, so nobody gets overwhelmed, would be to set up some daily meetings with the body. A good time for that would be right after the daily, so we don't lose the precious focus time. And those meetings are really necessary on a daily basis, only at the beginning. After a while, they can get more scarce, let's say three or two times per week. Yet at the very start, it will be of mighty help for the new joiner. Remember that people are different and they have different needs. So one new joiner can be totally different than another. The number of questions they will ask you might totally differ. So just to avoid interruptions for yourself, if you set up this meeting at a given time every day, then they know, then that's when they can interrupt, bother you and bring all the questions they had you will get less interruptions during the day. And that's a good advice, not only for buddies and new joiners, but for anyone who's doing mentoring or anyone who's like this bottleneck in a team that has a lot of knowledge and needs to transfer this knowledge to other people. Setting this daily, weekly checkpoint where they can bring all the questions instead of coming every time a new question popped in their head will provide a lot more focus for everyone and especially that person who needs to also do their job and focus. Two, help them out with the first meetings. So ask if they need any help for the first one-on-ones they are about to set up with all the other team members. Some people are more shy than others and some people might need help in the first ones to break the ice. And also the same goes for the daily meeting. Ask them if they need any help, if they need any preparation so they don't get caught off guard slowly they will get more independent. You can also ask your scrum master, if you have one, to help with explanation and guiding them through all the scrum events, whatever events you have in the team. Three, help to unblock. You have more context and know who to ask so these blockers can get removed quickly. And this provides a lot of help for somebody who's lost and doesn't even know where to begin. Four, try not to overwhelm. Try and introduce new things step by step. When you're in the new company, everything is new and it's very easy to get overwhelmed. Try to think what's indispensable and necessary to be introduced at the very beginning and what can actually wait a couple of more weeks and then prioritize. And five, do some kind of a pre-planning. Whether you're working with Scrum, Kanban or maybe Waterfall with Sprint, it might be a good idea to go over some of the stories the new joiner will implement before the sprint or something that you work with starts. This way you avoid any surprises and it's more predictable for the new joiner. They can go over the implementation than they thought to do with you and then they can see if it makes sense. And another important thing is to think about a few stories that the new joiners could implement when they join and prepare them before the new sprint starts. This way they can learn from real work and not some imaginary stuff that will never be even used. And I tell you so many times that me and my team have regretted not having prepared those stories. If we didn't do this, we lost the opportunity to ramp them up more efficiently. So don't make my mistake. Six hang out. Just like a guide in the new city, you guide the new journal through the company and the team. If you are in the office, take them to lunch or to just grab a coffee and bring some other team members so they can all get to know each other. And if you are on in remote and meet only via Zoom, just take some time and have a small talk. Explain a little bit about yourself and ask them who they are, where they come from and what do they do in their free time. This will help you both understand each other better and create a connection. And those connections we create are essential 
for building awesome team. And that's basically it. So to summarize, having a buddy is not only great for the new joiner because they don't feel forever alone, but also for the buddy themselves, especially if they are seeking a promotion to a leadership position, because then you can see they're actually going to enjoy this other part of the work apart from coding. It's also great for the company because people get more engaged and anybody who's doing that needs to get a little bit more sympathetic and compassionate with other people, understand the process of learning and how to best be a teacher or a mentor. This institution of a buddy can be really great. Whenever I go to a new company, if I don't get a buddy assigned, I'm either asking my manager to do so or just finding someone be that person for me because interrupting everyone or just not asking the important questions because you don't know who to interrupt or you don't want to interrupt other people is really going against effective onboarding. And that's all for today. I hope the advantages I explained about getting a buddy will persuade you to pursue assigning a buddy. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Thank you.